Sacktown, what is going on? It's Sacktown Pete back with another video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are having a great evening. Game just ended right now. <laughs> Where do I start? Uh, just straight up dog shit tonight. Sacramento Kings went on to lose to the Golden State Warriors, who were on the second night of the back-to-back. -back. Final score, 137-106. to 106. Uh, Let's go ahead and get into the numbers with the starting five. De'Aaron Fox in 31 minutes, he had 18 points, four boards, seven assists. Buddy Heald in 30 minutes, he had 10 points, six boards. Harrison Barnes in 30 minutes, he had 18 points, eight boards. Uh, Marvin Bagley in 24 minutes, he had five points, nine boards, two of nine. Rashad Holmes in 19 minutes, he had four points, three boards. And let's look at the bench. Corey Joseph in 22 minutes, he had eight points, five boards, four assists. Glenn Robinson third in 19 minutes, he had eight points, two rebounds. Kyle Guy in 16 minutes, he had seven points, two boards, five assists. Uh, Nemanja Belica in 16 minutes, he had two points, three boards. Hassan Whiteside in 12 minutes, he had eight points, two boards. And uh, Justin James in eight minutes, he had four points. Chimaizi Metu in five minutes, he had seven points. Robert Rodard in five minutes, he had four points, five, I'm sorry, six boards, one assist. And Jemias Ramsey in five minutes, he had three points. And uh, for the Golden State Warriors, uh, Steph going Steph. Uh, one of the best shooters I've ever seen. One of the best shooters ever to play the game. In 31 minutes, he had 30 points, nine assists, eight. I'm sorry, nine rebounds, eight assists. Andrew Wiggins had 28 minutes. He had 16 points, three rebounds, five assists. Kelly Oubre, in 26 minutes, he had 18 points, three rebounds, four of six from downtown. All right. Uh, Draymond Green in 21 minutes, he had five points, five boards, five assists, and the rookie uh, James uh, Weinsman. In 17 minutes, he had 10 points, five boards, one assist. So, <laughs> where do I start? Where do I begin? This game, there's just no energy from the start. There was no continuity. There was no consistency. Offense was terrible. Uh, the big struggled all night. Uh, you know, early on from the game, uh, I was blown away with the Golden State Warriors rookie Wiseman. He's a big dude. Uh, he looked really good. He destroyed Holmes. He destroyed Bagley in the paint. Disappointed in Holmes and Bagley's tonight. Uh, in particular, I'm really disappointed in Marvin Bagley. Two of nine. Uh, 24 minutes, five points, nine boards. You know, I don't know if the whole, you know, rumors with the, the whole Coach Bagley, his dad coming out and tweeting and deleting it. And then if you guys don't know, De'Aaron Fox took the Twitter stage and he goes on to say trade him and then De'Aaron Fox tweets this out saying that Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's just I've seen it all. Being a Kings fan, I have seen it all, guys. Uh the last decade plus, ten plus years, I've seen it all. From the dysfunction on the court. Uh when we're not dysfunctioning, now when we don't have any dysfunction on the court, it's uh off the court and the where the parents are involved. The parents are involved, should I say. And it's just I understand Marvin Bagley and his frustration with Luke Walton and uh, or coach his dad's frustration with Luke Walton. Uh, but at the same time, today he just and he got 24 minutes. He just uh, struggled offensively. Uh, it could be just mentally with the factoring in his head, the fact that his dad is saying one thing and Luke Walton's saying another thing. So I get it. I don't want to use that as an excuse, but I'm obviously thinking that that's probably affecting him. But Luke Walton has to do a better job getting him involved on the offensive end. There's multiple times I've seen this season. We're seven games in. We're three and four. But there's multiple freaking times I've seen this season where Marvin Bagley just hanging around the top of the key. He's setting screens. He's just hanging on top of the key. Luke, what are you doing? Run some plays for him. Uh, perfect example. The very first play of last, uh, the very first play of last game against the Houston Rockets. They had a play ran set for Marvin Bagley. He got his into his uh, position down low, deep down low, caught the ball, you know, with the left hand little layup, little left hand hook. That usually is money for him. And I think with the great play of Tyrese Hilliburton and Rashad Holmes so far, maybe I just, I haven't really touched on that because of that. But I really wish Luke Watson will get Marvin Bagley more involved on the offensive end. I don't want to just see run one freaking play and just go away from it. Run, continue to get some plays for him with or run, get him more focally involved in the offense. Luke, you got to do a better job of do, getting your 
your number two overall pick involved in the offense. Um, I have just uh, am disappointed in his play the last couple of games. Um, he has to step up. But then at the same time, it's like he has the tools to be good. Like he, this this last couple of games that we've seen from Bagley, it's not his best. Obviously, we know that. And I know the fan base. I know you guys are – most some of you guys are going to be hard on him. And I get it. I get it. I get your guys' frustration. I'm frustrated too. But at the same time, I really want what's best for him moving forward. And that is I want him to freaking be more actively involved on the offensive end. You know, setting screens, hanging on the top of the key, just ball watching the whole time or even just hoping for a second chance point. If, if that's going to continue to happen, if that's what Luke Walton wants to have with Marvin Bagley, it's a recipe for disaster. It's not going to end up well. It only only in time, it will get to a point where Marvin Bagley is not going to be happy. He's not going to want to be here. And the Sacramento Kings have done nothing but uh, gone above and beyond for Marvin Bagley. The last two and a half years, they've gone above and beyond for Marvin Bagley, meaning the fact that they want him, they want to, they, they are taking it precautionary with his injuries that he's dealt with in the past. Uh, they, according to Jason Ham, they view him as a building block and as a part of the future. But it's like, include him, get him involved actively on the offensive end is what I'm saying. Um, there's multiple times, like I said, I've seen him not catch the ball in his spots. There's multiple times where, like, I've seen him ball watching, just setting screens for the guards. And I get it. I get it. Rashad Holmes has played well this season, with the exception of tonight's game, because he only had four points and he was in foul trouble the majority of the game. I get it. Go with what's working. But at the same time, Luke, find ways to get your big and Marvin Bagley involved on offense to end. Um, and I just... Uh, We've it's crazy, man, to me, because like a week ago, we're talking about a great start to the season. We're talking about potentially just building on our uh, on our record so far. And to a week later, it's like, damn, we look like uh, pre- we look like one of the worst teams now of the in the NBA. Um, it just blows me away with this team. We're like one week. Oh, it's a good week. We look like we're going to surprise a lot of people. Oh, we're off to a good start. And now the last three games were 0 and 3. And I don't know if Charles Barkley just cursed us or, you know, just doing his guaranteed checks or like just talking about what he always is on about speaking too soon about saying that we're going to want us. He's, he sees us making the playoffs or he sees us being a top eight team. Uh, I don't know if that has a factor in this, but this team's not playing like that, like that right now. Uh, this team is just, uh, looks like there's distracted. It looks like there's a lot of off the court stuff with the parents involvement on in their tweets in their twitter should i say uh i just sometimes i love twitter i love acting with y'all on twitter but sometimes i wish it didn't exist you know just due to the fact that with all the stuff going on and parents going after each other and then just making their voices heard and opinions and whatnot i just want some peace for once uh the season we're three and four right now. The season is not over. Uh, I'm still staying optimistic because tonight's game it was a it was probably the worst finish of the season for worst, worst game of the season so far. Uh, this was worse than the Houston's game. Um, we just weren't in the game all game, and there's multiple times in the game they had so many chances to make their runs, but they just didn't get it done. You know, from Buddy Hill's tunnel vision, uh, there's so many times, multiple multiple times this game and the previous game where I'm just like scratching and pulling hair in my head, uh, seeing Buddy Heald dribble the ball with his head down and forcing shit. Like, Buddy Heald, you're in your fifth year. You you got your $90 million contract. You should be better than what you've been playing so far in the season, um, offensively and de- defensively. And from a guard's perspective, uh, you shouldn't be forcing and making bonehead turnovers out there. There's multiple times where you dribbled in, forced this shit against Draymond Green, uh, who deflected and took the ball away from you? And you did say you did, and you've done the same thing with PJ Tucker previously in, against the Rockets. Like no, like have a better awareness around when you're on the court when you have your head down, man. Is what I'm saying. Um, I just want to see better play from Buddy Hield. I obviously want to see better play from Marvin Bagley. Um, Harrison Barnes, man. I mean. I know we got routed tonight, but Harrison Barnes has been probably the best player on the Kings this year so far. 
Uh, just day one, consistent. Uh, a solid game from HP, man. 18 and 9 on 5 of 12 shooting, uh, 7 and 8 free throws. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, he had a solid game. 7 assists, 18 uh, on 18 shots. Uh, I'm sorry, on 18 points on 17 shots. But I want to see De'Aaron Fox continue to improve as a free throw shooter. Um, 74% from the line is not going to get it done, man. It's just not going to get. It's not going to get it done. You're a point guard. You got to shoot. You got to make a pair of free throws, man. I want to see that. I'm yet to see that here in the season, in this young season so far, and I want to see that. So, uh, with that being said, uh, the next seven games are at home. Uh, we got to play a lot better starting on Wednesday. Um, I'm not ready to give up on this team. You know, seven games in because realistically, we're seven games in. It's not the end of the world. But I'm not going to lie. The last three games, this team should have played a lot better tonight considering the fact that the Golden State Warriors were on a second night of a back-to-back. Um, you know, Steph Curry coming off that 62-point night last night. I didn't think he'd get that 60-plus points again tonight, but he did manage to get 30 points in three quarters. So that's just how great of a player he is. And Kelly Oubre, this just had to be the night against us where he broke out of his shooting slump. Um, he was four of six from downtown and he made before this science game, he made like one or two threes the whole season. So I just knew when he, when I saw him making his three points, I was like, you know what? It's their night. They're just, it just happened to be against us that he breaks out of his shooting slump and he plays like a, like we're accustomed to seeing him play as a player that Kelly Oubre is. And what I want to look forward to next, uh, game, which is Wednesday, I'm hoping Tyrese Hilliburton comes back. Um, the bench has been terrible with, with him being out. Uh, offense has been stagnant as, as hell when Fox is on the bench. Uh, Corey Joseph, it's just, I'm seeing so much dribbling with Corey Joseph. And it's not entirely his fault because that's just the way he plays. But there's just no rhythm. There's no flow without Tyree Hilliburton coming off the bench and making those plays and, you know, controlling tempo of the game. Um, and this was kind of expected because I knew... You know, this is where some areas where Bogdanovich was missed because Bogdanovich can create, was a guy who created his own shot uh, last year coming off the Kings bench. And this year, we don't have that guy that's coming off the bench and getting his own shot. Uh, we, we just don't. We don't. Uh, we have Hilliburton as a playmaker and guys that are trying to, you know, know their roles off the bench and are in position to get the shot up, but we don't have a shot maker or a, a netter uh, guard that can make plays uh, other than Fox and Hilliburton. So, with that being said, I'm looking forward to Tyree Hilliburton making his return on Wednesday. We freaking need him. Um, as, he, as you guys can see on the court, without his absence, uh, we just really badly need him, and that just shows you how much as, ne as he, he's needed on, on our team. And considering the fact that he's a rookie, he's definitely demanding and he's needed on the court for us so i hope we get to see him back on wednesday let me know what your guys your thoughts are on tonight's game it was just straight up straight up garbage uh i just was am extremely disappointed in the king's effort and their energy tonight you know getting routed you know by a team that you just uh, that played last night that played last night guys i just disappointed in the effort tonight Multiple times where the coaching was not great tonight. Uh, Luke Walton should have just, in the first half, you know, call timeout, yell at your players, light a fire under them. You know, get under your skin, Luke. I really, really was disappointed in your coaching tonight. Uh, but I'm not ready to panic yet because we're only seven games into the season and we're three and four. But this tonight, I can say, is the first game where they just look terrible and it's probably the first true blowout uh compared to any other games this season. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think about tonight's win and let me know uh, how this home sound is going to be. So we'll start it off at, on Wednesday against the Bulls. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this team responds because uh, they need to respond. They just got to play better basketball the next game and do some home cooking. You got the seven next game. The seven next games, the next seven games, should I say, damn, are going to be in your building. Do some home cooking, you know, get some momentum going. Uh, but it all starts with the coaching. It all starts with the players on the court. You know, Fox got uh, he's got to continue to elevate his game. You know, make a pair of free throws for once. Buddy Heels got to stop making 
dumb, predictable mistakes and shoot the ball better. I'm not complaining about Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes, keep doing your thing. You've done you've been fantastic since day one. Marvin Bagley, just tell your dad, let me just let me handle it. I got this, dad. You know, let me just handle my business. Just go out there and play and uh demand the ball. Get get to your spots. Get in the paint. Get deeper in the paint. You know, demand the ball. Demand the ball. And a big part of that is Luke's got to do a better job of just making him more of the focal point or making him making more runs, making making more calling more plays for him on the offensive end, getting him in the rhythm, and you know just making him comfortable. Come on, Luke, we can we this can do you can do this, this can be possible. You can make this happen, Luke. You just got to put it together. And Rashad Holmes, got to see you bounce back. I know I saw you struggle tonight. You're in foul trouble. This is probably the first game you struggled all night. But it's all good. It's all good, man. It's going to happen. Uh, just unfortunately, I didn't want it to happen tonight because I really thought this was a window. This could have been a winnable game. Come in, uh, going to the Chase Center against the Warriors where they were on a second. Uh, they're on a back-to-back. And the Kings should the Kings should have uh, definitely been closer than what they were on the score because they, if they would have played better, they would have been closer. They would have, I expected them to play a lot better against the Warriors team is what I'm saying that played last night. And they didn't get good, they did not get it done. Uh it's just disappointing to see. So if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Please hit the like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Uh I will catch you guys in my next video. You guys take care. Uh have a good night. And let's all hope that Tyrese Hilliburton, Halle Burton, Halle Burton, Hilliburton is back the next game because we badly need him back on the court. That's going to do it for me, guys. You guys take care. God bless. Have a good night. Peace.